it's Brittany and welcome back to my channel or if you are brand new then make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on your bell so you will be notified every single time that I upload I upload every single week numerous times a week every single week and now today's video I just finished watching crime scene the vanishing at the Cecil Hotel on Netflix and since it's fresh in my mind, I was like, okay. So of course this documentary focuses on the case of Elisa Lamb back in 2013, how she went missing at the Cecil Hotel, and then she was found in the water tank on the roof of this hotel. And it's just been this bizarre mystery ever since. There's all these conspiracies, it, it, the elevator footage, it is so crazy. If you haven't seen my video that's all about the Cecil Hotel, definitely check it out. I will leave it up above and down below. So we all know that the Cecil Hotel has a horrible, horrible, dangerous, scary, horrific crime reputation. There's robberies, there's stabbings, there's overdoses, there's murders, there's suicides, there's missing people. Serial killers have also stayed at this hotel, such as Richard Ramirez. Like, this hotel is effed up. And what really, you know, the Lisa Lamb case, because it is recent, even though it was 2013, but just the fact that it was such a mystery and everyone has been so invested in this case. But if you have not, you know, read about this case or anything like that, I definitely recommend watching this. I thought it was so well done. I learned a lot that I actually didn't know about this case, which I thought was really great to know because I've been so invested in it, just like a lot of people have been. But you learn a lot about the case and you see different perspectives. And it's just like, when I was watching it, I was, I was just shocked the whole time. I watched every single episode. There's four parts to it, so definitely check it out if you haven't seen it. So the Cecil Hotel is located in downtown Los Angeles, and Elisa Lamb was a 21-year-old Canadian college student who traveled by herself because she wanted to travel. She wanted to see the world, and she thought, let's go to California. So Elisa Lamb first went to San Diego, and then she came to Los Angeles January 28th. And February 1st, 2013 was when she was supposed to check out of the Cecil Hotel. And that is also the day that she went missing. Nobody had heard from Elisa. Her family always heard from her. She was always checking in when she was traveling alone and they didn't hear anything from her. It was so unlike her to just go silent like that. So the main conspiracy with the Elisa Lamb case is there had to have been somebody that was following her. Somebody killed her, she was murdered. How the heck did she get up in the water tank by herself? How the heck did she get through that door where the hotel says there's supposed to be an alarm that goes off and nobody can access the roof where the water tanks are without a key? And even opening it, there's supposed to be an alarm that goes crazy like in the front desk. So they would have been aware of somebody going up there. It's just so bizarre. So everyone's like, somebody killed her, somebody followed her. Now with the Cecil Hotel, I'm not shocked that they didn't have security cameras everywhere. I think every hotel should have cameras everywhere. I mean, this hotel obviously had cameras in the lobby and outside and only on some floors and in the elevators, but there were no cameras on the floor that Elisa Lam was actually staying on. And also the detectives who were going over the footage, they said the cameras were really positioned weirdly. You could barely really see anything that was going on. It was just awkward positioning of the cameras throughout the hotel. The Cecil Hotel is located in such a horrible part of downtown Los Angeles. So, you know, when she has been reported missing, they thought she was abducted. There's all these conspiracies out there. Somebody took her. She got involved with somebody around the hotel. It's just not a safe spot. And especially for a young 21 year old college student traveling by herself. Maybe she left at night. So the detectives were right on the case, of course, right on watching the security footage. And they were watching this footage for 20 hours a day. They didn't want to miss one second of it. And finally, they saw Elisa getting onto the elevator. And the elevator footage, I think, will forever haunt everybody who's watched it. And you can't stop watching it because it's so, so bizarre. Her movements, her the way she was pressing all the buttons, 
the arm movements looking as if somebody was around like she was communicating with someone or she was hallucinating it's just so it's so eerie like i have chills right now just thinking about it and i'm probably playing it over this video it's the creepiest footage that i've ever seen and what the detectives realized was she never left the hotel there's no footage of her leaving. She must be somewhere in this hotel. Somebody must have her. She might be under someone's control. Somebody in this hotel right now could be a possible serial killer, like who knows? You know, they don't know what's going on, but they think or they know that she has to be in this hotel. She was never spotted leaving, never seen leaving on camera, so. And when they saw the footage of her on the elevator, they were quick to notice, okay, there's something very bizarre about her behavior just the weird movements acting so strange acting as if she's seeing something or someone she's hiding from something or someone some conspiracies are that she was playing the elevator game because she's pressing all the buttons and then she's hiding and but that's also when the supernatural paranormal theories come in that you know so many people believe that this hotel is just so evil because of all the evil that has happened there and they believe there's all these dark forces and it gets to you and something might have been telling her to do something or something was getting into her head <sighs> just so messed up one of the creepiest conspiracies involving the elevator footage is that it was tampered with it was edited because of the timestamp it's all blurry it's like someone didn't want the la police to see what time she was in the elevator it was just unreadable you couldn't make out what time it was and there were cuts in between parts of the footage like when the elevator was staying open people think that there was somebody standing out there who was holding the door open holding the button open so it wouldn't close and then there was a shoe i have chills right now just thinking about it when she is turning left out of the elevator you see almost as if it's someone else's foot standing there and she walks and then the foot kind of follows her and goes to the left and it looks like there's another person there with her and then when the elevator is open there is a quick cut and it like moves fast but you can tell that there was a cut there and the conspiracy is was the person that was involved with her death were they seen on camera and then somehow they were edited out of it and were they the person who was tampering with it is this somebody who works at the cecil hotel this is an inside job that is the main conspiracy surrounding this case like everyone thinks it has to be someone who works at the hotel like no doubt there's actually about one minute of footage that has been completely cut out of the security footage in the elevator and the police say no it wasn't edited or anything like that and the former general manager and to be honest like i don't want to be rude or anything in this video i thought her demeanor was very odd in this documentary like especially when elisa lamb's body was found and her first instinct the general manager manager was to call her mother and then she called the police. I thought that was just really weird. I don't know, so some people are like, oh my God, like she has to be involved. No, she's not involved, but there's more to the story. The Cecil Hotel knows more and it's a cover up. I don't know, I just thought it was so weird. Like her body's found and you call your mother instead of calling the police. And what she was saying to her mother on the phone was that something bad had happened and she needs to get ready for it. So, you know, maybe she just, since she already knows the hotel has such a bad reputation and she was a general manager for 10 years, I don't know, maybe she just thought it was just the hotel's reputation was gonna be tarnished even more, but I mean, it's already had a horrible reputation for years and years and years, you know? I just thought it was so weird how she just wanted to call her mom right away and then she said that and then she calls the police. You know, when she knew that Elisa Lam was missing and this, you know, the police were, constantly coming to the hotel they were looking at every room and every closet and trying to find different ways like where what happened to her because the police did not think that she was alive if she's still in this hotel they're gonna find a body somewhere 
But getting back to the tampered elevator footage, the general manager said that there's no way it could have been tampered with or edited because it was given straight away to the LAPD. So now what I found interesting was the fact that there were a few YouTubers that were involved in this documentary and they filmed videos at this hotel a few years after um, Elisa Lam was found and they went into the elevator and they, you know, were looking at the buttons that she pressed and they were just kind of tracing back, you know, what she would have been doing in the hotel, where she was walking, what she might have been thinking, different ways of how she could have gotten up to the roof. You know the part in the elevator footage when the doors just open and, you know, the theory is somebody was holding the door open that you can't see or it was something paranormal because it just wouldn't close, but they discovered why that was happening. There is a door hold button and Elisa Lam pressed that button, which leaves the door open for two minutes. So they discovered that and, you know, they just said, okay, yeah, it had to have been. She pressed the door hold button. So it wasn't anything supernatural, paranormal, or nobody on the other side was holding the door. She pressed it because she was pressing all the buttons when she was in the elevator. And what we also learned is Elisa Lam was staying on the fifth floor, but when she was in this elevator, because there's no cameras on the fifth floor, but there are cameras in the elevators, she was actually on the 14th floor when she walked into the elevator, which is the floor below the roof. And how that was discovered was when they pressed 14, it lights up and then it doesn't light up because that's the floor that you're on. And if you press the other buttons, they all light up because you're not on that floor. So she was on the 14th floor. She was staying on the fifth floor, but for some reason she was up on the 14th and she got into the elevator on the 14th floor, which is the floor below the roof. And when she finally leaves the elevator for good, she goes to the left. But that is the question, where did she go? There's a staircase to go up to the roof. There's a fire escape window she could have gone through. There's all these possibilities. The police were going through the entire hotel. They had dogs that had her scent and were, you know, trying to find her scent around the hotel. And the dogs went to one of the windows where the fire escape is, where she could have gone outside and climbed up the ladder to go to the roof. And her scent stopped there, like it was there. So she might have gone that way. But then there's also a staircase that she could have gone up. But that is a staircase where if she opened the door by herself or somebody, an inside job person, somebody who works there, who had access to get up there, could have let, let her up there, but no alarm went off or anything like that. So it's just so bizarre. And then watching the video clips of, you know, the YouTubers going near that staircase, it's just so, I don't know, this documentary was so well put together. Very well put together. It's just, I had chills the entire time watching it. I was so invested in it. And another fact that I learned from watching this documentary was when Elisa Lam first checked in, and I believe she was staying at the Cecil Hotel for four days. When she first checked in, she was sharing a room with a few other girls. And her behavior was getting very bizarre. She was acting very weird. She was. She also, it came out that she has, um, she suffered with bipolar and depression and, you know, she was very active on social media, especially Tumblr. She was always posting on Tumblr. Um, she was like an open book. She was sh uh, sharing her feelings and, you know, how she needed to get away and that's why she went to California and, you know, she just wanted to have an adventure. She loves traveling. She wants to see the world. So the girls that she was sharing this room with were complaining about her to the staff and saying, you know, she's just acting so bizarre. Like there's something not right with her. So the staff then moved her to her own separate room where she stayed for the remainder of her stay at the hotel. So Elisa was missing for 19 days and one of the employees at the hotel was who found her in the water tank. They say that she was floating and you know, she was facing up and she was completely naked. Her clothes that you see her wearing in the elevator footage are the clothes that were in the water tank with her. But why was she naked? Why was she in the water tank? Was somebody dumping her body in there? Was she killed off site? And then they brought her body there. Like somebody had to have done it. There's something so off about this. They say the lid was shut. So how did she shut the lid when she's floating in water? It seems like somebody would have had to close it on her. So months went by and the autopsy still wasn't 
revealed to the public and there's so many conspiracies about that like what the heck is going on how can they how do they not have this revealed yet you know it's such a public case and everyone wants to know what's going on why is it taking so long but there was no evidence of internal or external injuries to her body so there's still conspiracies was she murdered did she drown was it a suicide was it an accidental drowning there's all these theories and everyone wants to know what's going on so why is it taking so long and when elisa was missing before she was found the police did search the top of the roof and there's a theory that someone at the lapd might have delayed when her body was discovered so there's all this speculation that someone from the lapd knows something and employees at the CISA hotel know something and the general manager knows something and they're all working together to cover something up and then there's theories saying was she possessed did something paranormal get to her did something tell her to kill herself another conspiracy that just i never knew about was a youtuber put it together how the elisa lamb case and the movie Dark Water. I've never seen Dark Water before. I know what it is, but I've never seen it. And I believe it was originally a movie from Japan, and then they made an English version that I believe came out in 2005. So way before the Elisa Lam case, which was in 2013. But the similarities with the movie and the case, you would think Dark Water was about Elisa Lam, but Elisa Lam happened years and years after Dark Water came out. I thought that was so eerie. Oh my God, and that poor guy, Morbid, Pablo, his real name was Pablo, and how he was accused of the murder because of the content that he was putting out on YouTube and people, and he stayed at the CISO Hotel one year prior to when Elisa Lam checked in. So everyone was like harassing this guy online. He's like this heavy metal guy. And, and he had this video of this girl that was running away and then was eventually murdered. I mean, it wasn't real, of course. And then he had this song about a girl that's drowning and people were just accusing him of murdering Elisa Lam. It's crazy how there's all these conspiracies that come out and they really make it look as if someone is guilty. And this guy, he's not guilty. He had nothing to do with it. He was harassed online. He's in the documentary and he's telling his side of the story. And he said just he, he felt suicidal from it because he just felt the whole world was accusing him of murdering Elisa Lam. He didn't even know who she was. The internet can be so hateful and just be so quick to attack people. And you know, they make it out with all these conspiracies. Oh my God, like you're a murderer. He was getting comments constantly calling him a murderer. You killed Elisa Lam. He got his YouTube account terminated. He got his Facebook terminated, his email, everything was taken from him because everyone had this crazy conspiracy about him that he killed her. And he said, you know, he was so into music and his art and it's like hard for him to write music now. It's such a different experience in a bad way. So then it came out that the cause of death was an accidental drowning. And so many people are like, what the heck? It can't be an accidental drowning. Like there's this, there's that. Somebody had to have been there. Look at the elevator footage. There's a freaking shoe. Somebody was out there. Somebody was following her. It's an inside job. But then there was this very crucial mistake that happened that kind of flipped everything around and made more sense. I'm one of those people who was like, it has to be somebody. Like there's somebody that, it's, it's, it's an inside job. There's somebody in there in that hotel who had something to do with it. So when her body was found by one of the employees at the hotel, he said the lid was open and that's how he discovered her body. And then when it got out, someone said, like the media or somebody said that it was actually closed. So that brings the whole conspiracy. Okay, somebody closed it on her because there's no way she could have closed it herself. There's no la ladder in the water tank. So how could she reach to bring it down? So that mistake that was given out to the public and to the media that the lid was closed it was, is what caused everyone to think, okay, she had to have been murdered, but really the employee said no, it was opened. And that's how he found her. So that's when, you know, so it came out that she, you know, was bipolar and she was taking medication for her bipolar and for her depression. And she has been hospitalized before and 
she has had these episodes from her bipolar of her you know having those bizarre movements and stuff which has been confirmed by her family you know she would start hallucinating she would hear voices and they're telling her things and what you saw in the elevator was confirmed by her sister that that has happened before and it's because she stopped taking her medication and she's done that before so they say that she stopped taking her medication when she was in Los Angeles and she was having a very like she was having an episode so when she was having this episode you know she's running around the Cecil Hotel and she's hallucinating she's hearing voices and she's scared and she probably thought that somebody was after her but it's really just an episode that she was having and you know that's when it makes sense that it was an accidental drowning and that she got up to the roof she got into the water tank and she took off her clothes and it just all started coming together and making sense and her parents and her sister do believe that it was an accidental drowning and it wasn't a murder or you know any foul play or anything like that because there was no signs of foul play on her body inside her body there was no sexual assault like nothing nothing at all so that's what just made it so bizarre because everyone was like it has to be there had to be a person there was some inside job there there's so many there is still weird conspiracy surrounding this case and just seeing all the facts and seeing you know watching the four parts of this documentary and seeing everything you know it, it all makes sense in the end of what happened and I hope that her family has the closure that they need. I'm not sure why they just, I mean, she is, she was a 21 year old and she wanted to travel by herself, but I'm not sure why they just, like no one went with her. I know she wanted to go by herself and you know, she was writing about it and everything, but um, I don't know. It's very sad and it's very tragic, but I would definitely recommend if you have been very invested, invested in this case to watch this for sure you probably already have or if you've never heard about the elisa lamb case it's definitely you should definitely watch this and you'll just you know hear everything have a better understanding of what was going on but it's very informative and you learn a lot of facts that you didn't know about so i definitely recommend i just wanted to make this video because i have made a few other videos about elisa lamb and just the whole case and just you know about the Cecil Hotel besides Elisa Land because there's just so many crazy dark there's so much dark history it has a horrible reputation so so anyways guys thank you so much for watching I hope that you enjoyed this video let me know your thoughts down below if you've already seen um, this Netflix documentary and um, I will see you in my next video